Many of you are interested in learning about blockchain for other areas. You may not be interested in investing in cryptocurrency, but blockchain is of interest to you. And I have a great interview today to help you learn more about how blockchain is going to fit into every area of our life. Matter of fact, I have the author of Blockchain, The Next Everything. So want to learn more about blockchain? Stay with me. Hey, this is Dr. Letitia Wright, and you're listening to the Get Crowdfunded Now podcast. This podcast is for anybody who's interested in crowdfunding. You want to learn about raising money for your business, investing, or even how to raise money for charity using crowdfunding. I'm your host, Dr. Letitia Wright, America's crowdfunding strategist and a crowdfunding expert that's actually been there, done that, and got the money. Thanks for hanging with us. Here's today's podcast. All right. I love, love, love having our next guest because you guys are always asking me questions about blockchain and why we talk about cryptocurrency. And I feel that it's very important for you to understand blockchain and what impact it has in the future. So on today's show, we have Stephen P. Williams. He's a journalist and he's written a book called Blockchain, The Next Everything. It's out today as we're taping (laughs) it's out today on uh, Scribner and it's ready for you to read but I think that he will be a great authority to really help us understand just how important blockchain is to us in the future and as we're investing as we're looking at what we're going to do with blockchain so welcome Stephen to the Get Crowdfunded Now podcast. Hey thank you I'm really happy to be here. So a, a lot of people know that blockchain is attract, attached to cryptocurrency, and I've even talked about blockchain and journalism on the show. But let's just take a step back and just explain to everybody, what is blockchain? <laughs> That's a quite a big question, and I'll, t- I'll try to give you a concise answer. But basically, blockchain is a way of recording data that secure and uh, immutable, meaning that it, it can't be hacked. And um, that's, that's really what it is at heart. It's a piece of software that you can, you can download uh, the software needed to join a public blockchain, and it's, it's all done through your computer or device. Now, a lot of people are looking at what's happening with Bitcoin, and that's kind of tainting them on all of blockchain. Do you think that that's really fair? Uh, no, I, I don't think it's fair. I think Bitcoin has been a curse on blockchain um, because the blockchain was invented to support the Bitcoin uh, currency because there's no physical Bitcoin and you need to be able to track who owns the coin, when they spend the coin, and who receives the coin. And blockchain was the perfect technology for tracking that because it's a very secure digital ledger. Um, and I think people associate Bitcoin with a, a lot of greed and hype and uh, tulip mania. I also disagree with that uh, description of Bitcoin, but that's really how it's seen in the public mind. And that has definitely tainted people's perception of blockchain. In truth, blockchain is a foundational technology. It supported Bitcoin, but it is also used for all kinds of other industries, charities, and different social causes. Okay, let's talk about how uh, we can use blockchain and why you feel it is the next everything. So I feel blockchain uh, has some qualities that are very interesting. And one of them is that every blockchain is contained reflected on the computers or devices of everyone who participates in that chain. And in the purest form, it means that there's no central authority running that chain. Every every decision is made by all the people who participate in the chain. So that's kind of a new uh, system of organization that we haven't really seen in the modern world, which is pretty much always a hierarchy top top down. And I think that that is going to allow for a lot more uh, access for people who now don't have access to different financial systems or power power structures. I think it's going to eliminate a lot of the middle people who now we now rely on for assurance that something is correct and true, and we pay them a lot of money for that, like banks or political agents or, or other people like that. So I think it could have a huge effect on society going forward. 
Very good. So where, what other areas do you see us using blockchain? Um, when, when I talk about blockchain journalism, do you feel like that's really coming about or is that a little ways down? I think that's, you know, that's definitely happening. There are serious attempts being made. I don't think it's uh, quite succeeded yet. And I, I'm a, I've been a journalist all my life, and I have my doubts about how well that will work in the immediate future, but I, I think down the road, perhaps much better. Um, I think that, that blockchain, you know, some very interesting use cases that are going on right now are in the art world, surprisingly enough. Um, there's a company called Codex in England that is using blockchain to register the provenance, uh, meaning the history and the creation of paintings and objects and collectibles, so that anyone who buys one of those in the future will know exactly where it came from. Um, theft and, and fraud is a big problem in the art world. Um, so that's one really interesting area is, is art on the blockchain. Okay. So this will kind of help us cut down on fraud, help us track exactly where, you know, who's owned the painting and, and how long, and I guess tr help us track closer to what the real value of everything is. Yeah, you can always, you'll always be able to look at it and see see what's been the history of that painting. Right now, all that information is contained in pieces of paper scattered around the world with the various people who dealt with the painting, and this puts it all in the center. Another example of that that's maybe more concrete is uh, supply chain. Uh, for instance the, instance, the company Maersk, a giant shipping company, has worked with IBM to create blockchain technology to track their shipments through ports say a shipment of flowers from South Africa to Rotterdam that might in the past have taken 200 or 300 different transactions. Now all of those paper transactions would be contained in the uh, blockchain available for anyone to look at at each stage of the journey. It cuts down on, on a lot of expense and headache. Do you think that when it comes to blockchain and, and nonprofits or charities using it, um, what do you think is the big inhibitor? Is it the understanding of it? Is it getting the technology you need to use it? What is what is going to be the big hump for them to get over, for charities to get over? Well, it's interesting because I think they're leading the, the way in, in some ways. And um, I do think that the the interface that people, um, the user experience people have with trying to use blockchain and cryptocurrency is right now usually challenging and takes some, some thought and effort. And I think that will be changing pretty rapidly as human-centered design is, is implemented on the blockchain. But I would say that that is actually quite quite a great tool for um, nonprofits. There are, um, I spoke with a nonprofit in London that um, uses an interesting uh, tool of blockchain called the smart contract, which is basically an algorithmic contract that will de determine if what you want to happen happens, and if that happens, it will release the payment. So for a charity, you might say, instead of uh, a person donating $500 all at once to a charity, they could have an agreement that they will donate $500, but they'll do it $50 at a time, and they'll set goals for each of those $50. And the smart contract will realize that, that say, the charity supplied food to 10 people, okay, another $50 is released, or the charity did another goal and another $50 is released. And I think that is great for reassuring donors that their money is being used properly and also helping the charities um, keep track and know how much effect they're having in the world. So I, I find that really interesting. Very good, very good. So what what else about this blockchain that just you feel is going to be the next everything? Um, I feel that it's going to transform the lives of two, the two billion people on Earth who don't have identification right now and are basically locked out of the financial system. And that's... Uh, you know, a huge percentage of the Earth's population that really don't have access to the modern world of finance. And um, with blockchain and, uh, like right now, 
many of those people don't have IDs, so they can't go to a bank and open an account, or there isn't a bank within two days walking distance, or many, many reasons that they don't have enough money to open an account. But they do generally have access to cell phones, and often those cell phones are smartphones. So blockchain can be used through telephones, and um, developing countries often have pretty good good networks of cellular data. So this is a way of getting all of those people identification on the blockchain and access to financial services. So I think that will cause an entrepreneurial stampede, which really could transform the economies of a lot of countries. Well, it could actually help our country, too, because we have a homeless population that many times, because I work with uh, homeless kids at Stand Up for Kids, Orange County, a lot of times what's happening with the kids that are 18, 19, 20, they don't have ID. They don't have their birth certificate. They have may, may have been let go from a, 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 a foster home, and it's like, okay, we're not getting paid for you. Okay, bye. They have nothing. You know, they have no right. birth certificate, no nothing. And we spend a lot of time getting their documents together. And so I could see this helping um, even the United States, our homeless, you know, population. So that would be an incredible, be incredible uh, thing. So tell us what you yeah. cover in blockchain, the next everything, because I do want people to pick up your book and get a deeper understanding of blockchain. So I tried to, uh, I, when I was studying blockchain, I found the, most of the books quite impenetrable and very technical and kind of cold. And so I've been a writer all my life, and I decided I'd write a book that let people kind of experience what blockchain was and what it could mean for the world in a general way, in a very friendly way. And that's what I've tried to do with the book. Um, and I cite many examples about the the culture of blockchain here in New York City and different projects around the world that are using it. Um, one area that I think is really, really um, uh, fascinating is the idea that you can use blockchain and your something called a sovereign identity, which is similar to what we were just talking about. But this identity you would carry with you for life, and you could keep all of your data on that, including your your internet data. Right now, we're like crops in a field, and um, you know, every once in a while, Amazon and Google and Facebook they all sweep through and harvest all the crops. They don't leave anything behind, and mm -hmm. that's our data. But with a sovereign identity, we could control our data that shows everything we buy and do and where we go, and we could sell that to these companies if we wanted to, or just keep it private. I think that's really important because many people are saying that data is the the oil of the 21st century, the most valuable resource that we have. Mm, okay. So we need to think about that. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so yeah. much for really giving us a perspective of what we should be thinking about and not getting caught up in the hype. Where can we find blockchain, the next everything? Where can we buy it? So you can buy it at, on Amazon or at your local bookstore. And if you want to learn more about it, you could go to my website, which is stephenpwilliams.com. That's Stephen with a P-H, P, middle initial, Williams. And um, that will direct you to places to buy the book. And also you can see more of my writing about blockchain technology. And on Twitter, I'm Absolutely. Uh, at Stephen Williams, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. Okay, great. We will put those in the show notes so people will be able to great. click the link in the show notes, go straight over to your website, read some more about exactly. it. L listen, you guys, this is the kind of information you need to get. He's not in the sticks dreaming this stuff up. He's from New York. You know, he has an <laughs> MBA in sustainability from Bard College and an MA in communications from Stanford. So he's, you know, he's not out in the fields dreaming this up. He's in the middle of this and he's giving us some uh -huh. up-to-date information. And I want my tribe to be on top of everything. So thank you so much, Stephen, for joining us. And uh, thank That's you guys great. for listening. I'm happy so to answer back. any questions. Very good. He's on Twitter. He's going to answer questions. So let's do it, you guys. Okay. Thank you so much. Remember, Thanks, ignoring one's conscience is neither safe nor right. And I can't wait to see you guys next time. 
Thanks for listening to the podcast. I appreciate you for sharing it and favoriting it. We're on anchor.fm, Google Play, and Stitcher. You can subscribe anywhere. You can also get your free Get Crowdfunded Now, Crowdfunding Made Easy, download at www.getcrowdfundednow.com. Remember, ignoring one's conscience is neither safe nor right. And I'll see you next time.